ahead and get started this evening. Thanks everyone for being here tonight. We'll open it up for any prayer requests or any testimonies anyone would like to share. Roberto? Uh, this is so much a, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, testimony. It's more of a, something that I've been feeling for the past few weeks. I feel like the Lord wants me to talk about the river. I still don't know why. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. Just uh, tell you in a minute. No, that's fine. Uh, and I keep hearing the same two scriptures. Saying that he shouldn't 
love your kids enough to tell them about Jesus so they won't spend eternity in hell? And I thought, well, that's a little twisted way to say what I think the message was in that bumper sticker. Well, <laughs> I, I was a little taken aback by the bumper sticker, and I thought, you know, that is, I think the heart of that message is true. We're to train up our children in the ways that they must go, but we can't choose for our children. And our love for our children does nothing other than, you know, show the light on the path. They have to choose the path. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, if that's not some guilt and some fire and some brimstone and <laughs> such a horrible picture of who our God is, that he dangles our children over hell, that he is any less of a mother or father than we are, that it's our job to save our children. I can't save myself. How can I save my children? I mean, the pressure. 
And then the condemnation for those who have trained up their children and watched them not choose that path for themselves. Oh, goodness sakes. Grandchildren, nieces, nephews, grandbabies, I mean. to add to your to-do list, to yeah. my to-do list. Yes. I, I can't save myself. <laughs> Let me repeat that. I can't save myself. I can, what, what is it? I'm barely saved, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm barely saved, right? I, 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 I can't check the boxes every day of my life. How? And how about being as much your and your children? Yep. <laughs> your heavenly father gives good no, gifts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. God loves your children. God lo I, 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 oh. Yeah, anyway, so that was my drive-in tonight. <laughs> now, now that you said that about children burning in hell, and I was talking to my mom earlier today, and uh, she was saying, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of worried about the factor of her husband, and uh, how she has a woman with a whole dementia. So she said, yeah, I'm a little worried because, uh, you know, if we didn't get better, you know, maybe we're going to get divorced, and I don't know what's going to happen to him. I just started thinking about that. And, and you know, we, we have this body. But God says we're going to come there. This is just so we can leave here. But we're spiritual beings in here. In my opinion, we don't know what's happening. What, what his spirit is talking to God mm -hmm. that he's not expressing right. through his right. mouth. Right. That's something that we don't know because the limitations that we have of, of how, how far we can see with our physical eyes, mm -hmm. but I do believe that he, his spirit, he's having a relationship with God right now, and they're speaking, and God's telling him things, and he's like, therefore, I love you, and all that. His body might not be able to express that, but I know in his spirit, he's already in that relationship. We don't know for sure, but I do believe that that's what's happening, and I don't think God is, is This person has some sort of physical disability that they cannot express. You know, it says in, in, in Romans 10, confess with your mouth. Well, he doesn't have the ability right now because his brain is not letting him put those mm -hmm. thoughts together. But we don't know what his, if, if he's doing it with his spirit right now. That's what he says to him every day. Mm -hmm. Lord, I believe in you. You're my savior. And I know that God raised you from the dead. Mm -hmm. He's saved right there.
particularly for Jay and us, prayer uh, a couple days ago, uh, spending time with the Lord outside doing stuff. And <clears throat> I see uh, in the realm that uh, we've kind of uh, shadowed what IHOP's doing in Kansas City. Um, and the Lord said something really. Uh, it's time for Eastern Nation to create, have its own identity completely. Hearing the restoration of the House of David, the Davidic of worship, and stuff like that, and that's all been awesome and everything else like that. And I appreciate it, and I've always loved it, I always will love it. But there's something more, something more that's tugging on God's heart that He's trying to reveal to us. Um, just because it's what we've always done doesn't mean that's what we always will do. Yeah. Uh, the rope, He said, take the axe to the rope cut the rope and let's move on and obviously if it's a rope and it's floating it's on a river well the Lord told me very specifically that we're to build an ark right. to be continued right. <laughs> okay. that's all I can say so, but I'll throw that out there yeah. we're to build an ark I gotta hold that I can't go there <laughs> it is not easy at all but that's why the river has been spoken we have to prepare
Let your truth come forth as a sword, as a sword to divide between the darkness and the light, Lord. Let the gray areas no longer be hidden, Lord. Let the darkness flee, Lord. Let your truth come and be lifted high, Lord. Let your people no longer remain silent, Lord, but speak your truth, being light and salt in this world. Lord, that you are the bread of life, and we come tonight and we feast on your presence, Lord. We feast on your word, Lord. We feast in your presence, Lord, with you, in communion with you, Lord, and we drink deeply of the joy that comes in your presence, Lord, that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, would rise up within us. We drink deeply, Lord, and Lord, we are refreshed. We are refreshed, Lord, in your presence. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that it takes two or three. It takes two or three. You did it with 12, Lord. But in these last days, we will do greater things. We don't need 12 anymore. Two or three to agree together in one mind and one accord to speak your word, Lord, to speak your truth. And let your glory shine, Lord, your grace. Your grace be known, your loving kindness, Lord, for you are good. You are good. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you called us, Lord, that you revealed your truth to us, Lord. We say that it is precious. The revelations of your grace are precious and they are rare. And we thank you, Lord, that you have chosen this body to be a messenger of your grace in the time when we need it most, Lord, in the age when we need it most. We thank you, Lord, for continued revelation, Lord, continued revelation of the depth, of the breadth, of the height, of the width of your great love, your great love for us, for all your people, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. August 8th? Okay, yes. week from Friday? Okay. Yes. Just mark that on your calendar. I'm going to start building an ark. <laughs> Let's speak the word tonight. I don't know that song. I'll have to learn it. I think I'm probably going to have to learn it. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Lord, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding are being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine.
wake us from our sleep and our slumber.
Moses stood on the mountain Waiting for you to pass by You put your hand over his face So in your presence he would Oh
Praise God. Praise God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence here tonight, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that we're sensing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for the reality of your presence. For revealing yourself to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you tonight. calling us your children, for loving us, providing and protecting us, and blessing us in every way. We thank you that you show us your face in so many ways in each and every day, Lord. You make your face to shine upon us. And as we behold you, Lord, we receive everything we have need of. For in your presence, Lord, is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, Lord, is pleasures forevermore. Everything about you, Lord, is good. Everything about you is provision, is blessing, is love and grace. And we thank you tonight, Lord, for that truth and for that reality, Lord. And we do it in Jesus' name, the name that's above every name, the name that you chose to call yourself as Savior. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, worship team. And literally, I'm preaching to the choir tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Thank the Lord. Praise God. James, that cherry juice is doing wonders for you. <laughs> it's a miracle. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to get right to the word of God tonight so we can move you all on and try to hear from the Lord, but I want to be as uh, brief as possible and still get across what I feel like the Holy Spirit speaking to me so y'all can get home and get on with the rest of your week and be refreshed for coming back here Sunday. Praise the Lord. Thanks again for everybody that has come out tonight. Appreciate it. And I know the Lord wants to bless you, so praise God. I want to read from uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and just one verse tonight to begin with. Hebrews 6 and verse 18. And it's the fundamental things that God wants to do in our lives. And uh, in order for those things to be uh, manifest, how many of you know we've got to believe? Praise the Lord. I mean, because it's not the will of God that any should perish, and yet we know there are those that perish. Uh, Roberta was saying, talking about people, uh, and we hear it all the time, it's so frustrating that if it's the will of God for them to uh, die of cancer or you know, suffer some other illness or something, that's just so insane because all you have to do is read the Bible and you know the will of God is that they be healed. Praise the Lord, even though everybody's not healed. It doesn't change the will of God. Everybody doesn't believe the will of God. You know, they, it's easier to dumb it down and then you don't have to uh, make ex explain why everything doesn't happen the way the Bible says it, which actually is a burden that falls on us for not believing. And I'm sure there are other variables uh, that I don't have all the answers to, but I do know this, that we are, we are charged with one task, and that is simply to believe. Whatever God has said is what we're to do, is, is what we're to believe and to agree with. So if we could find 
how to tap into that and uh, focus on that, then I believe it would be life changing for every one of us right here. Not to mention how it could impact and change the lives of others that we have contact with and have influence with. Amen? So that's what I want to talk about. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, and thou thy sons, thy wives. And no, that's not the scripture. Praise the Lord. It's a good one, but it's not the one. This is one Suzanne's going to be using in the near future. Praise the Lord. But you've got me confused with that blonde, curly-headed woman. Not me. Praise the Lord. Well, the Lord's, com the Lord's confirming Suzanne's uh, word anyhow, whether apparently I've been kind of slipped off the edge here. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is back. Glory to God. This is it. That by two immutable things, everybody say immutable. immutable. Unchanging, amen, the same. By two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. So I want to read this again because I, I want to talk about all of this that's encapsulated in this one verse and how, it, how it's explained, amen, uh, or actually over the next two chapters. But uh, that by two immutable things, two unchanging things in which it was impossible for God to lie, that we might have a strong consolation, that word actually is encouragement, mm -hmm. who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. So we got two unchangeable things that are introduced here in Hebrews chapter 6, and then they are actually presented and expanded upon in Hebrews 7 and 8. And what they are are actually the two pillars upon which the gospel of grace sits or rests. Amen? Now, without these foundation pillars or stones being in place, the structure of the gospel is incomplete. Amen? And it's without permanence or it's not steadfast, if you will. If you don't have the two immutable things that he's talking about here that God cannot lie about, then the gospel of grace doesn't really have a, a substantive place to rest, nor does it have permanence uh, in, a, in a real way in our lives. And now the flip side of that is, it's because it is established, because it is permanent, because God cannot lie about it, it's absolutely amazing. It is literally life-changing. And we hear that all the time from preachers, you know, this will change your life. But this really is because it is the, the, the basic uh, fundamental teaching behind the gospel. Amen? And when you see these two things that he's talking about here, and you understand the permanence, and, and you understand the absolute completion of them, then a, there's a sense of security and overwhelming gratitude to God that results. Amen? So there's no other concepts in the Bible that show the finished work of Christ more clearly than these two unchangeable things that God is speaking of here in Hebrews 6, verse 18. Two immutable things in which... These two immutable things, God, it's impossible for God to lie about them. Right. Amen? Right. So let's go back up a little bit to Hebrews 6 and verse 13, and we'll go right down through verse 20. Hebrews 6, 13 through 20, and you can get an idea of what we're talking about here. Praise the Lord. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely... Blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. Remember that, those two immutable things. Praise the Lord. A blessing, I'll bless you. 
multiplying, I'll multiply thee. Praise the Lord. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Mm -hmm. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, that's us. Wherein God, willing more abundantly. So here, not only did God do this for Abraham, but within that, he's even more abundantly willing to show unto us the heirs of that promise, the immutability, the unchangeableness of his counsel confirmed it. God confirmed this then by an oath. Amen. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong encouragement who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered. Even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So God promised Abraham back in Genesis uh, chapter 22, uh, verse 16, that he would surely bless him and that he would surely multiply him, right? right. Now in Hebrews chapter 6, Verse 17, what we just read, if you want to go back there, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. God is swearing something to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? The heirs of the promise. Yeah. Just like he swore to Abraham, but even more so because it's abundantly more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Two immutable things. The promise is the same. Yeah. To bless and to multiply us. Now, he's not just talking about offspring here, because we know that Abraham was blessed in every area, everything multiplied, and you can, you can take it from uh, 1 Chronicles, you don't have to go there, but 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, we, we, we call it the Jabez prayer, but it's where he says, bless me indeed, and increase my influence, or increase my territory, amen, which is the very same thing, he's saying, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to multiply you. I'm, I'm going to increase you and everything about you, everything you, you have, uh, you set your hand to, everything that you touch. I mean, it's the, it's the uh, I'll prosper you in everything that you set your hand to. Amen? So I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing, but I'm also going to multiply you, your influence, your, your impact, your uh, wealth, your health, your family, all things, you understand? Praise the Lord. So the promise is the same. It's blessing and increase. Praise the Lord. God takes an oath, and he takes his oath on his own name. He swears by his own, own name that what I'm promising you is true. A name that's higher than any name. Amen. He swears by himself that I'm going to bless you. That's you. Listen, that's me. That's what we need to understand. God has sworn and God cannot lie about these two immutable things through which he's going to bless and increase you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, he's telling us he swears by his name. This is true. Now, you can't, I mean, where are you going to go for greater validation or confirmation, right? And I believe that the only reason that God has come to us is to bless us and to increase us. Praise the Lord. Even more so than he did with Abraham. He came to Abraham. And out of the clear blue says, I want to bless you and multiply you. All I'm asking is that you believe. And because he believed, God called that righteousness or, uh, you know, uh, can, uh, imparted him with righteousness or actually attributed him with righteousness. He has imparted righteousness to us. Even greater than just having it legalized. It's a reality. It's a physical, natural reality, supernaturally speaking, praise the Lord. So most of Christianity doesn't, as Suzanne mentioned tonight with the uh, bumper sticker and Roberto's talking about with, uh, you know, emails and blogs and 
conversations and, and all of us see this junk and hear it all the time. Turn on the TV, Christian television, non-Christian television. I mean, it's just out there. Amen? So God isn't being presented that way. At, and especially not to other believers. I mean, we'll present God that way to a sinner sometimes if, if you got good sense. But the problem is religion presents God and the gospel to the unsaved without them having to do anything in any way in order to receive the blessing of God. And then we turn around and tell Christians they have to earn the blessings. Yeah. You gotta do this, you gotta be good, you gotta you know, do the right thing, you gotta be the right place, you gotta do all these little deals in order for God then to bless you. But let's look at Hebrews chapter six, verse 13. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. But here he swears an oath. God, the creator of everything. And he promises that he has come to bless us and multiply us. God's promised this. I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. Amen. That is God's unchanging purpose in coming to us. To bless us and to increase. Amen. Now, what's interesting here is there's three benefits that come to us through understanding the two unchangeable things, the blessing and the increase. There's two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. I mean, it's impossible for God to lie about this. And there's three things that result from this unchangeableness of God concerning, amen, these two, the blessing and the increase. And number one, look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. I mentioned it. In the opening, by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we, have, we might have a strong consolation or strong encouragement. Amen? Yeah. So number one is we have strong encouragement. But here's the deal. And I'm sure it's true uh, of a lot of you. I've heard it some here tonight. But as a pastor, most of the people that I talk to are strongly discouraged more than strongly encouraged. And I'm talking about Christians. Right. Now imagine this. Im imagine getting up every morning with real optimism. I mean with just abundant optimism. Praise the Lord. Encouraged about everything. What a way to live. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And I, I mean joy in everything we do. Joy in everyday life. Not just on Sunday when we get a blessing, spiritually speaking. You know what I mean? Yep. Encouraged. Hallelujah. Where did the joy go? Well, for the most part, as far as the church is concerned, it was sacrificed on the altar of what we have to do. Mm. Religious activity, rule keeping, legalism, demands that say we got to do this in order to get God to do this. You know, you'll never meet, you, you, you might meet some legalists who are happy and you know, but you'll never meet a legalist who is joyous. Uh -huh. Come on now. The only joy they get is making you miserable. Right. Amen. Just let them get their own underwear in a wad, yeah. and you know, and don't let it bother you. I mean, they always twist it up about something and angry and frustrated, and and it always ends up being projected onto the people around them. They hate people that have joy. Yeah. I mean, they figure you're up to no good. You've got to be doing something really bad. There's something wrong with them. They ought to be really serious about this and grim, you know, and after all, 
This is hard work being a Christian. Not according to this. God just comes to us, blesses us, and increases us without us having done anything except believing that His Word is good. That when He says something, He means it. Praise God. So we need this strong encouragement. Amen. These two unchangeable things provide strong encouragement. Amen. And the joy that encouragement produces. You ever, you ever just been depressed and then something happened to encourage you and it's like, man, it's like two different people. Yeah. You can't even go back to that. You can't even think about how bummed out you were because all of a sudden you feel like anything's possible today. You know, something good can really happen, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Let's look at Romans chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. Being not weak in faith, this is speaking of Abraham, who had this original promise, not as abundant as ours, but a promise. He considered not his own body now dead, and when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen? He didn't look at his circumstance. He didn't consider his circumstance. He only considered the promise. He only considered the one who gave the promise. Amen? Why we get discouraged is we quit looking to the one who's encouraging us and we start looking at all the crap that discourages us and it grows and grows and grows until we don't believe the promise anymore. It's not just that we don't believe the promise. We don't believe God. When you believe God, it brings glory to God. It makes God real. More people can see the reality of God when we believe, when we're encouraged, when we believe that God can't lie even if he wanted to. If he said it, man, it's got to happen if somebody can just believe it. Now, you can't tell me Abraham wasn't bombarded with reasons not to believe. All he had to do was get up in the morning and drag himself, amen, to the well for, for the morning bath or whatever. He's an old man. He knows his body's not doing what it did when he was 50, 40, whatever, you know. He's now 99. And Sarah's been, you know, barren from day one. And he still believes God. Now, don't tell me my situation is, is just, it, it's, it's unique. You know, mine's bad. It's worse because, come on, I know God promised, but, you know, he had no idea what kind of a mess I was going to be in. This is just a metaphor for any kind of junk that you're going through. Through any kind of lie that the enemy's trying to bring against you, that it can't get better, that it won't ever change. Abraham just believed. He held on and believed. For 20-some years, he believed without manifestation. But it did come to pass because God could not lie and he believed that God wouldn't lie. Amen. And it happened. Praise the Lord. Okay, number two. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. So he said he, it, the one thing that we get from, from these two, from this pr promise of God, these two uh, pillars, is strong encouragement. Amen. And then he says, uh, I think it's 18, isn't it? No, 19. You're right. Which hope we have is an anchor of the soul. Praise the Lord. The anchor. An anchor for your soul. What's the soul represent? What's, what's it, its function? It's not what goes to heaven. I mean, in terms of your spirit, that's not what the soul is, although some people confuse the two. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's an anchor for where we think, decide, and feel. These two unchangeable things, blessing and increase, will anchor your soul to the truth that is life changing. If thou canst believe. 
It's an anchor that no matter how much the winds of controversy and crap and, 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 and uh, uh, denial come against you, you're anchored to this truth, this reality, this unfailing God who cannot lie is going to bless you and increase you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, if you can believe that, you can understand how you can be anchored in the storm when all of the things that are negative and all of the things that are denying this truth, if you can really believe it, you have an anchor that won't move you, amen, or shipwreck you simply because it's denying what God has promised. Is God not bigger than everything else? And He's promised this. And if you can believe it, you have an anchor. No matter how much everything else is in denial of that truth, nothing is greater than God. And he has sworn by his own name, yep. this you will receive. Yep. This is yours. Amen. Come on now. Hallelujah. We know Abraham got it, but he said, I'm going to make sure you get it even more abundantly than Abraham got it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So circumstances and situations don't move us. We think, we feel, and we choose better. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The fact that God has taken an oath on his own name to bless us and to multiply us or increase us ought to encourage us to live feeling good about ourselves. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And good about our relationship with God. Yep. I mean, come on. This is what he wants you to do. We ought to feel good about ourselves. Even when we screw up, God's already promised this. That ought to make us feel good, even when the world's telling us you ought to feel bad. And it ought to draw us closer to God, knowing that this is a done deal. He's not waiting to do this based on my next behavioral issue. He's already done it. He's already declared me righteous and said, this is, the, this is what I do. This is who I am. Yes. Praise the Lord. Okay, Hebrews 6, 19 for number 3. Which hope we have an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. Praise God. A hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil. Praise God. Romans 4. And verse 18. Praise the name of the Lord. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall I see be. He hoped against hope. Yes. Yes. Amen. A hope both secure and steadfast and one which enters within the veil. What's he saying? That hope takes you right into the presence of God. Come on. That belief takes you right into his tangible presence. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's us living in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. How, you, ever, uh, you ever hear something come and, and it's like God saying, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart, but it sounds like you, so you don't listen. You think it's just me imagining. But God is in you. God's got to work through you to say anything to you. So it does sound like you, but it's God. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. God is not only with us, we're not just in his presence. He's in us. We are his presence. Amen. That's the church. Come on. We are God here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're his children. Amen. It's free and total access to God. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go anywhere to get into his presence. Because everywhere we go is his presence. Look, look at Hebrews uh, 6. And verse 20.
whether the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus, made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus went in. He was the forerunner, but we've all entered in now. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So we belong there. Yes. We belong in God's presence. We're not usurpers. We're not sneaking through the back door. We, we didn't just, you know, creep in when somebody else left the door ajar. That's where we belong. Our presence isn't just tolerated by God. It's God's desire to be one with us. We're his children. He wants us there all the time. He wants us aware of his presence all the time. Amen? Look, being in his presence heals us. It's not what we're doing. It's, being, it's aware of his presence. That's what we're doing when we're laying hands on the sick. We're, it's, uh, P Peter, John, they said, look, don't look on us as though we had something. But this is Christ. It's the name of God. His presence heals us. You know, being in his presence encourages us. Have you ever, when you know God, you know, is... There, I mean, we have, in church services especially, tangible, you know, manifest moments, I guess you could call it, where we're just aware. It isn't that he's any more there than he is at any other time. We're just more conscious of it because of worship, because of entering into a, a, a consciousness uh, of spiritual uh, awakening, so to speak, amen, that, that we feel like we're encouraged. As I said before, you just... You, you go away. Nothing's changed in the natural. Nothing. You haven't seen any manifestation of anything. It's just that you just feel like, hey, things are going to be all right. I've been in God's presence. And all of a sudden, I'm encouraged. Praise the Lord. Being in his, in his presence inspires us. I hear it in every service. Now, half the time, or I won't say half the time, but a lot of the times people are saying things. They don't even know it's inspirational. They don't even know it's inspired. They think they're just sharing something. But they're inspired by God to share God's thoughts, God's feelings in their own way. Through their own intellect, through their own speech patterns, through their own personality. But it's still God. And it's inspiration. Yes. And not only does it encourage us and heal us and inspire us to be in his presence, but it releases us in the power to be who he made us to be in the first place. There's a power that becomes parent and, and, it, and it releases us to be who he already created us to be yes. in other words all we need is God's presence so, and the, the question is here do you see uh, God's presence as a place of refuge I mean your perception is everything if you see God's presence as a place of danger and possible punishment or rejection, then, it's, then you're not seeing it the way God intended you to see. He's, he wants you to see it as a refuge of encouragement, of healing, of deliverance, of, of whatever your need might be. Amen? A place of hope. Aware of him ought to make you hopeful. No matter what else is going on. You should feel freely, completely accepted. Praise the Lord. Even more, you ought to feel like he is excitedly welcoming you. Amen. This isn't a, oh, here he comes again. You know. Okay, come on. You know, stay the weekend. He's excitedly away welcoming us. That's, the, that's what he's showing us through the parable of the prodigal son. The father runs to the kid. Right. Right. He's excited. He's home. He's back. You know, and he can't wait. And that's the sense we're supposed to have of his 
presence with us all the time. He's excited about us being in his presence. And in his presence, fullness of joy. Pleasures forevermore. Blessing and increase. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he wants us to experience that regardless of how we're doing with our to-do list. He wants us to know, regardless of where we are, checking off our good do deeds and whatever. It's the same for him. He's not looking at the list. That's your issue, not his. He's excited that you're in his presence. And the list has nothing to do with it. Praise God. Amen. So you should, and you can. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at the, Jesus has become our high priest, right? right? Now, Hebrews 7 and 12, let's look at that quickly. Now, the high priest under the old covenant, however he was accepted is how Israel was accepted. Right. Right. If he was a good high priest, holy, then Israel was accepted. Right. If he was a bummer and a loser, then Israel suffered for, the, for another year. Right. Amen. Well, we know Jesus is accepted. Amen. Therefore, we are accepted. God sees us as he sees Jesus, our high priest. Mm -hmm. Amen. For the priesthood being changed, there is made necessity a change also of the law. So the priesthood changed from the Aaronic priesthood to Jesus Christ, the order of Melchizedek, forever, a priest forever without beginning or end. And it also then makes a necessity to change the covenant or the law through which the priest operates. That's right. So the old covenant, the old law is done away with. Right. It's, it, it no longer exists as far as we're concerned. We're under a different priesthood. Right. Therefore, we're under a different law. It's now the law of love. Hallelujah. His love. Amen. The love of God that is not restrained or constrained by our behavior. Right. It's open. It's automatic. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. All right. Hebrews 7, uh, verse 22 through 24. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament or better covenant. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. So there were lots of priests because they only lived for 70 years or 90 years or 50 years or however long their life was. So there were lots of priests because they lived X number of years, died, and then there would have to be another one to take his place. But Jesus, this man, because he continueth forever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. That's why it's talked Amen. about the order of Melchizedek, without beginning or without end. Amen. Amen. So this man, Jesus, because he continues forever, yep. has an unchangeable priesthood. Amen. So it's never going to change. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. Right? Praise the Lord. It's never going to change. So what Jesus does as our high priest is going to continue without interruption forever. Right. Thank you, Lord. Forever. Hebrews 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. He lives forever. I'm secure forever. You're secure forever. Because he lives forever. Amen? Well, what about when, when I'm sinning? 
I know that comes as a shock to some of you, but that does happen, <laughs> praise the Lord, from time to time. What happens when I'm screwing up big time? Well, he knew I would sin. Because he knows the end from the beginning and everything in between. That's precisely why he's our high priest forever. Yes. Amen? 24-7, yes. 365. Hallelujah. Praise God. Access to God is based on this unchanging thing, not me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not my behavior. Right. Not my good days and my bad days. Not my to-do list and my failure to keep the to-do list, but based on this forever continuous high priest. Praise the Lord. Look at Jude chapter 24 and verse 25. Here's an unchangeable thing for you. Jude, no chapter, uh, just 24 through 25. Everybody forgets that. There's only one. Including me from time to time. I usually remember that way I can seem really intelligent when somebody asks me. Okay, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Look at this. Present you faultless before his presence, the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise God. He keeps you. Yeah. faultless mm -hmm. and presents you to God perfect yeah. Yeah. praise the Lord the only wise God our Savior mm -hmm. hallelujah both now and forever praise the Lord mm -hmm. Hebrews 8 and 6 one more scripture after this one but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Praise the Lord. So don't let religionists and legalists, amen, try to attach addendums, praise the Lord, of human performance to this divine contract. There it is. It's bogus. It's, it's bad theology. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 through 14. Final scriptures. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man after he had offered the one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Mm -hmm. For by one offering, by one offering, right. he hath perfected. Perfected. That, you, don't, you don't get better than perfect. Right. Perfect as good as it gets. Perfected forever them that are sanctified. That would be us. Praise the Lord. Perfected. These promises are for the perfect. For the perfected. For the righteous. In whom God dwells. That's us. To bless and to increase. If you just think about the logic of this. How could the presence of God be anywhere where there was not blessing and increase? Amen? All it takes is somebody to believe in that reality. Wherever God is is a good place to be if you're a believer. In fact, it's a good place to be if you're not a believer. Because he wants to love you into belief. Amen? It's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. Praise the Lord. Amen. God says, here's the deal. I've decided that I'm going to do my part. And I'm going to do your part too. Praise the Lord. That's the new covenant. God did his part 
And he did our part too. He brought, he, he, he judged, he's righteous, he's holy, he's pure, he has a justice that demands justice, a righteousness that demands justice, but he, but he knows we can't meet the demand. So he places himself in the position of judgment and takes my judgment. Though he was perfect. So that I can be perfect. Amen. In, in, without me doing anything to achieve it. Except to believe. Why does he do that? Because he wants to bless me. And he wants to increase me. And the only way he can do it is by making a promise to himself. There's no other reason. The reason for doing what he has to do with sin isn't because he's just all about taking care of sin. It's because he wants me. He wants to bless me and increase me, and sin is the, in the way. So he has to deal with the sin, but that's not the real issue. The real issue is he wants me. But he's got to deal with that to get me. Now put yourself in that same position. That's what we're talking about. So God comes to us for the purpose of blessing us and increasing us, not to get after us for sin. Right. Sin's just, an, just a side thing that has to be dealt with. Right. He comes to all of us as a God who wants to bless and increase. He, that's his nature. Yes. Everywhere God is, blessing and increase is the result. Where people believe. It has to be that way because he swore. Yep. Who cannot lie. By these two immutable things you'll understand. I'm telling you the truth. Yep. You are to be blessed and you are to be increased. Yes. Amen. Can you see if we can grasp this? If we can get our head around this thing, our heart, our, our spirit already accepts it, but if we could somehow get this settled, yeah. yep. wouldn't you not be encouraged? I mean, wouldn't you be more optimistic? Yeah. Wouldn't you be more hopeful? Wouldn't you be a better person to be around? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And you would live for God out of gratitude, not out of bondage and drudgery. Right. Right. You, you know, you wouldn't have to be beat over the head with rules and regulations. I'm not saying you wouldn't still screw up. We're human. We're flesh. But, but it would be more of a sense of, I, I, this God is so good. Hallelujah. He loves me so much. Yeah. Yes. I want to I be appreciative of that. I don't live you know, with this constant thought of, oh, well, if I'm not really good for God tomorrow, he'll... See, he's not going to change. Right. He's immutable. Yeah. He's unchanging. The same yesterday, today, and forever. His feeling for me today is the same as it was yesterday, same as it was before the foundation of the world. His feelings for you are identical. But see, we let husbands, wives, neighbors, co-workers, clerks, people in trap we let them determine who we are, our acceptability, our, our, our uh, you know, blessing barometer. Amen? Praise the Lord. I'm going to do it, my part and your part. And we only believe in order to receive what Jesus died to give us, which is the finished work. Praise the Lord. The finished work gave us access into the veil. It says when he hung on the cross, as he died, the veil rent in twain. Now there's nothing between us and the love of God. No demand. Mm -hmm. Our high priest entered in and left the door wide open. Hallelujah. He said, follow me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's all we have to do. It's all we can do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We can become who we've already been made to be. The blessed, the increased, the righteousness of God in Christ, his glory revealed. Amen?
Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But because we, we're bombarded with all of these other things, we have to remind ourselves. You've got to remind yourself every day. Every time the obstacle, every time the negative rears its ugly head, I'm blessed, I'm increased. I don't give it. Who, what it looks like. God has promised, and he cannot lie. By these two immutable things, he has promised to bless me and to increase me. Try not to open your mouth to anything but blessing and increase. And just see if you're not more positive, more optimistic, more hopeful, more encouraged. You can't encourage people if you're discouraged. You can't bring hope to people if you're hopeless. Amen? How are you going to represent Jesus if you're in worse shape than they are? This is a key. And as you can see, it is the very foundation upon which the gospel is established. If you can understand this, you can understand why grace is always available. It never ends. It's always accessible. It's always there. He gives us grace for grace. The reason he gives us grace is so he can give us more grace. That's the truth. It sounds too good to be true, but that's the reality. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the name above every name. Hallelujah. Go blessed and increase. Hallelujah.